All right, so we're going to move on to our next question. Um, the This next question is from, oh gosh, hopefully I can do this right, Alexandra Mikatsiegler. That's my best take at it. Uh, what are the best exercises to loosen hips? That's the question. What what questions come into your head, Matt, when you get asked that question? My question is, why are your hips tight in the first place? So if it's coming, sorry, I know the students know that we always say it depends. If your issue is coming from a muscle flexibility problem, then yeah, you're going to need to probably get that moving a little bit. So some dynamic stretching would probably be good. You're going to need to work on that for a significant amount of time. If it's joint related, you're going to need to treat that differently. And there's some good techniques. Um, I think David, haven't you've put some stuff out on like hip mobility stuff, right? Do I remember you seeing on it? like on your wise? stuff on your, on your Instagram, on your Instagram. Yeah. Have you? Oh, I, I'm sure I, I yeah. probably have. Yeah. But I, I've done a lot of random things. Yeah. So doing some like <laughs> hip openers and again, not necessarily static holds, but some like mobil mobilizations and stuff like that um, is a good one. But there's also the possibility that your hips are tight because you need a little bit more strength from some of your smaller muscles, like your deep hip rotators and stuff like that. You can have tightness for a variety of reasons. And if you're trying something and it's not working, it may be because you're not treating the right thing. So if, if it's a if it's everything's tightening down because it's easier for the muscles to stabilize if they're just tight, you might need to work on some strength of some of those little muscles. If it's a joint mobility problem, the joint, the actual capsule of the joint that surrounds it that makes it a living tissue is stiff, you're gonna to need to do some joint mobility stuff. If it's a flexibility problem, you're gonna to need to work on stretching out whatever muscle is tight and then strengthening through that new range that you get. Because just stretching often isn't enough. You've got to make sure your body can utilize that new motion. Think, David, yeah. you might have some better or better ideas than me in terms of no, no, I, I, I agree completely. I think one thing that's important to look at with this question, and you hit this, I just think this might be a more clear way to say it in one word. Is it tightness or is it tension? Ooh, right? Like, one. like, is it genuinely tight? Is it short? Is the length of the literal muscle short? Is it is it literally tight and you can't move or lever from it? Or is it tense? You know, is it short because it's tightening itself up to try and protect something? And so that's a conversation, you know, beyond the scope of this podcast. But if it's tension, it's usually because it doesn't quite feel safe letting the joint go through that full range of motion because of those hip rotators, because of the stabilizers and things around it. And so working on that stability as a whole. And also, like, there's this thing called autogenic inhibition that you can use that muscle to relax itself create an increased range of motion, a lot of PNF activities, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, as far as the acronym goes. But there's a lot of those types of um, activities and techniques out there to help relax that. And then once you have that gateway to use that range of motion, now you work on stabilizing it and actually using it, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's if it's tense. That's if, that's if you don't have that strength there. Let's say it doesn't have to necessarily be those hip flexors. Well, I mean, it seems to be a common culprit, but like, doesn't have to be in the hip itself. It could be in the back. It could be in the core. It could be something that's just not quite doing its job. So something else is having to do, make up slack so that you can put one foot in front of the other in a slightly efficient way. And that's the tension side of it. Then there's also the tight side of it, right? Like, let's say you drive for work. Let's say you have a sedentary desk job. Let's say that you're in a position where you're literally in hip flexion for long periods of time. You're going to be a little tight. You are. Like you're just stuck there. Our body adapts and it's one of those things. Ah, why am I blanking right now? It's called, um, adaptive shoot, shortening, uh, selective. Yeah, there we go. Adaptive shortening. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. And so it, it um, it, because you don't use that range of motion on a normal basis, it's something that your body adaptively shortens into. It's like, okay, well you use me in this range of motion on a normal basis. I'll just stay in this range of motion. This is where our body's happy. And then when you try and do something that isn't that, then it starts barking back at you a little bit. And so it's just important to find out why it is quote unquote tight and or tense and to move forward from there. I'm going to bring us to our next question. I know Matt's itching to continue. You want to say one more thing? 
All right. My one thing Let's to actually give an exercise instead of an explanation, I one of the things that I will commonly give patients to continue to keep things open, I'm a big fan of giving as little as possible, making it easy as possible to do. So before and after runs, one of my favorite things, I forget the individual's name, but I learned this from someone. There's a like, it's it's just basically doing lunges, like lunges as a warm up, lunges as a cool down to kind of try to maintain that motion. So you're kind of drawing it as far as you comfortably can, front, laterally, reverse couple different directions just in just kind of a circle just to open things up on both sides of the hips because you get strengthening you get a nice dynamic stretch and you also load at the end range which tells your body oh i can do this so lunges in different in, a, in, a, in multiple planes of motion can be really helpful before and after a run because that's because you know that as soon as you stop you're gonna if i if we give you a specific exercise to go we need to do this a certain you're not going to do it but if you add something into part of your run routine you're more likely to do it so i would say some nice lunges in different planes of motion can be really helpful to work on. Just an easy way to work on hip range of motion. Then see what happens and let us know. That is not me prescribing that. That's suggesting. So you can't sue. <laughs> <laughs>